playable on that map. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, that was, uh, just don't get me started on Crossfire. All right, here's the, the crowd cheering for TY. Uh, just having his usual expression on his face where he's just kind of like, I'm here, I'm ready to win. I'm not, I'm not, uh, he's not like, how do I explain this? He doesn't have a, a massive ego. He just doesn't have that. He's got yeah. all the fans rallying behind him, but you wouldn't know it if you just looked at him right here. Yeah, he's one of the more calm players. He likes to sit in the booth and just prepare by himself. He's not really too flashy. He's not like hyping up the crowd so much. I mean, they're hyping for him, but he's not doing the hyping. We have the other player that he's playing against, Rune over here. No stats just yet. I wanted to say before, uh, Ty was 4-0 so far, and he's not 0-1 versus Protoss. That's not possible. That's um, not correct. <laughs> so, just an incorrect stack there. I'm not sure the exact number, but he is definitely ahead against Protoss, doing very well so far. I think he might be 2-0. Yeah, I think it sounds about right. Um, Ruin, so far no, no stats here just yet. This guy has gone from B-teamer to, to top Protoss to back to B-teamer for his team, I feel. He really needs to prove himself today. He's got possibly the worst opponent to face if he has any nerve issues whatsoever today playing against TY. TY is just, like you said, 4-0. Top-notch player. He's got the whole crowd behind him. Ruin is going to have to play the game of his life here on the King Sejong Station. Let's find out if he can do it. Down here in the bottom right, the Terran player for KT Rolster on a streak so far. It's T.Y. Something a little bit funky going on with his hair there. His opponent to the top left for I am for Team Incredible Miracle. It's Ruin. He wants to ruin the win streak of T.Y. right now. Something you were saying before about T.Y. is that, um, or about Rune rather, is that if he's nervous at all versus T.Y., he's actually just going to get torn apart. He's going to get torn apart. Yeah. T.Y. has punished Protoss so far um, with really defensive play as well as just crazy drop harass all over the map. And if you're nervous at all, if you're shaking in the booth, you're, you're not going to be ready to, to hold off everything that T.Y. is going to throw at you. And so I hope Rune... Um, either, had to, either has his nerves in check or he's uh, ready to play straight up. Yeah, that's 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 true. Any cracks uh, in TY is just going to... He's going to take the bomb that in whatever game you're playing, the adventure game where you unlock the bomb and you know exactly the only place that you're going to bomb is where there's like cracks on the wall. It's like very obvious. And the, I mean, this happens in Zelda a lot, but in other RPG yeah. games or, or adventure games, where it's like, all right, I've unlocked the bomb tech now. Now I can blow up the, the place with the crack. <laughs> TY is finding your cracks. He's going to blow them up. So we'll see how well Ruin can keep himself composed. One of the uh, interesting little trivia points about Ruin is he's one of very few players, pro gamers in Korea, to have only two parts to his name. He's Hong Dub, yep. which is pretty rare. Only two syllables. Yeah. And uh, TY, on the other hand, his ID comes from his name, uh, which is Taeyang. That's where the TY comes from. This The overlay SCV. got like really shy while we were talking about it, by the way. It, came away, it went away and came back for yeah. a second. Uh, SCV being either really meticulous or looking like he's gonna, I don't know. He's he's being all over the map right now. There's gas, but no Reaper. So I think we are gonna see a proxy. Yeah. And this is why he put that early depot here. Was for the probes, he's thinking, okay, there's a Reaper coming out here probably. I gotta get out of here. I don't wanna lose my probe to the Reaper. The depot blocks the probe out, so the probe can't identify if there's gas taken or not, can't identify the gas timing. Didn't see the Marine either. And, and here's that, that factory. Factory, man. So, Ruin, choosing not to go straight up against TY. Or, or, no, or no, vice no, no, versa. No, no. TY no, not sorry, going straight up against Ruin. <laughs> TY doing a little trickery here. And he can, he can, you know, he can definitely do this. He has a confidence to pull off something like this. Uh, it's up to Ruin to defend it. And I like this against a player who maybe you don't have too much respect for sometimes you can just say oh i can take a, a quick win here go it's for really, a proxy really interesting to do a build like this against somebody you don't have a lot of information for stats wise yeah okay he sees no add-on here so now he has to know something is going on he's got factory tech where is it and what sort of tech is he going to throw at me starport comes out here 
Do we see a widow mine? Yes. So he's gonna have very, very quick widow mines, and uh, could potentially drop them on his opponent, or even walk up to the front because it's not too far away, proxy wise. Yeah. And I, I, I love this on this map because you can get over there so quickly, and it's not a huge investment. You're not going like cloak banshees over there. Um, you can definitely get those Buddha Mines over to your opponent's base really quickly, do a lot of damage, especially if he's not expecting it. But like you said before, not seeing that, um, not seeing that add-on. He's got to know something's up. Yeah. He's actually burrowed his Widow Mine, too, right next to the factory, so if anything comes over to see it, it's going to be the last thing it sees. And uh, he can also keep that from being targeted down before his medevac is out. He's going to have one Hellion and a Widow Mine, plus the Marines he's rallying across the map now. This is an old-school push. We saw this a lot in Wings of Liberty with uh, just Hellions and Marines. And then uh, in Heart of the Swarm, we saw it a lot with Hellbats sometimes, and then we saw it with, of course... Uh, just just Widow Mines, and then later Widow Mines and Hellions, depending on what the situation was with the boosters. And uh, there's all sorts of variations of this type of proxy. The Marines being spotted here is a pretty big tell. He doesn't have that Stargate finished yet, but he might actually start a Phoenix right away out of that Stargate because he knows a drop is coming. He's got to assume that. Um, there it is. Phoenix is started. He's got an idea. He's like, there's no reason you boost your Marines across the map unless you're going to drop me. He even sets a pile on the edge of the map expecting this, but he needs to react with his probes perfectly here. Not moving them yet. He's just keeping them there. It's going down. He's got to be careful. Those Hellions being forced out there. Decent defense so far, but the Marines at the front. And nothing really able to deal with that. Yep, he's going to have to send some Stalkers down here. The Bunker is a great idea. With the Medivac even healing the SCV, it's going to be so hard to stop that Bunkering. Here comes the Phoenix. He's trying to eliminate that Medivac. Even the Mothership core comes in here. If that Bunker finishes, this would be a disaster, but he does push this away. And really solid defense by Ruin, actually. The only thing he's going to have to be worried about, of course, is that, that Widow Mine. Oh my god, don't do it like that. That was so scary. And, of course, the Oracle, once that comes out, he will be able to use the detection ability of that to to eliminate the Widow Mine. But the defense here, pretty solid for, for Ruin. Yeah, can't really complain too much. Only six, six uh, SCVs, or probes going down. That Widow Mine is going to be sadly taken out. Yep, not even going to get one more shot off. He's trying to run away, but there's nowhere to go. I'm sorry. Sorry, Widow Mine. <laughs> your, your journey ends here. You did what you needed to do. Your time is done for this world. Well, the uh, the situation economic-wise is really, really solid for Rune because he has two next on. He's got the ability to double front of his probes. Tech-wise, he's going to a funny place because the Oracle's not really going to do a lot for him for the rest of this game. Um, might be able to get a revelation off, or if he, he catches TY with his pants down, get a few kills here and there. It's mostly just going to be a scout. Um, and the Phoenix as well is not really going to get too much done for him. He might be able to stop a drop or finish off a dropship with that. There's already a turret in place, of course, at the Nashville right now. He's trying to find a sweet spot, you know, and there's no Marines here. One turret's not enough. He does get three kills so far in total. I think one of those was one back at his base, but two right there. Stalker's moving out on the map. It looks like he lost one of them there. Yeah. Oracle just hanging out on the edge. Living life on the edge. 43. <laughs> yeah. This Four drop is coming in. Yeah, drop comes in here. Uh, just mentioning the Harvester count is getting a pretty, pretty big deficit here. Wow, he even gets the overcharge off with that. That was a bit overzealous to, to go ahead and drop that down. Uh, the Phoenixes are marauding around here looking for any stray medevac they can find. And what he could do with this, this Phoenix production is go into Phoenix Colossi. It's a very solid composition because the Phoenixes deal with the, the Vikings quite handedly. And then you uh, you have free reign with your Colossi. We haven't seen that for a while. Um, remember, it used to be popular. I remember when it first started getting popular back in Wings and Liberty. Yeah, man, that was all um, I was doing for a while on Zelda yeah. Caverns. <laughs> Same with me, yeah. Very solid build back in the day. You don't Could want those. Go into it. Yeah, you, you don't want those Vikings like in the middle of the map in that little cavern to, to pick off your Colossi. That was that was horrible. Oh, that was that was always so annoying. But unfortunately, it does stop at five. So this will be good for at least uh, picking off stream medevacs. That medevac has to be really careful. Some marauders hiding in the bunker. They can't fire back, but they can't be targeted. Oh. This is risky. If you're messing with fire. You want to harass against that many. Tried to pick up an SCV, had to drop it. A very nice scan goes down right as a bunch of stuff is coming up here. Sees those two gateways and the robotics bay. Yeah, TY knows the timing of this quite well. The the medevac is unloaded because he's so scared the Phoenixes are going to eventually go and find him. 
We have uh, no more Phoenix production, like you said, stopping at five. And that's really great for shutting down drops still, as mentioned before. And they can be great in a pinch to, to pick off a unit for free, do a little bit of damage to a medevac on the edge like we just saw. Um, I mean, even one or two shots makes a big difference later on when you're trying to, to do that drop defense. This Warp Prism is going to be good for Harass, but it's also going to delay his Colossi just a little teensy bit. Teensy, teensy bit. And these Phoenixes. He's being very active with these Phoenixes, which I like. He's not, you know, he didn't spill it and he's like, okay, I got to focus on other stuff. He's actually going around the map, making it a lot harder for TY to use his dropping potential. And uh, he's even going in there getting a couple uh, SCVs when he possibly can. Coming back here, he's got to be ready for this push. He definitely is. I wonder if TY, okay, he does know about the third base. He just scouted it. And the third base is going to finish up in just a second. He's putting on a lot of pressure at the natural, on the other hand. We'll stop this, this pylon spotter that gets queued up. But uh, he's not really going to be able to attack into the natural directly here. He might want to consider going around the other side and attacking the third base, but it's already finished. That means that the uh, Mothership core can defend it. Yeah, no push just yet. Looks like TY's repositioning going towards that third. Just heading over there. It doesn't look like he wants to commit just yet. As soon as this army is spotted, he wants to send that drop on the left side of the main base. That's what his Phoenixes are for. Got to be careful. Free Stalker. Yeah, I mean, that little hole in the ground there makes it a lot more difficult for him to actually maneuver around. Phoenixes need to be on this ASAP. There's a warp in the Zealots immediately. Three of them. There's only Marines there. That should be enough. But a lack of multitasking here from Ruin. He's actually going to lose his Nexus. Those force fields are just not good enough. <laughs> and these Marines not dying even with the warp into the zealots they are going to eventually get cleaned up but look at this a big drop in the main with the rest of these units and this is what ty is really good at just this mid-game aggression this multitasking unfortunately a little bit of problem defending here for ruin he he saw that the army was going to attack his third base and his units were a little bit late to the party two medevacs going down on the on the way out actually is pretty painful though for ty who doesn't have a third um, but I feel like one of the big problems there was was just the the engagement and his force seals might have been able to save the Nexus, but he missed. There was a shot of uh, Ruin. Ruin crazy. is actually a lefty. You guys just saw him there. He was playing with his right hand uh, on the keyboard. Yeah. Pretty uh, cool. I'm left-handed, but it, only for eating and writing. Those are the only two things I left hand. Literally the only two things. I'm and a righty. Sorry to be boring. No, that's fine. <laughs> That's cool. You can, you can be the cool guy. Too. You know, there's a lot of right-handed people. There are. Yeah. <laughs> I do mix in well with the, the general population. Well, this this is a really scary situation right now for TY. Upgrade-wise, he's trying to get those out. Uh, he doesn't have concussive shells yet for his 10 Marauders. His Viking count is not where he wants it to be. And even just a few Phoenixes in the composition to help out against those Vikings with your Colossi can help. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming amount. It doesn't have to be a massive commitment to Phoenixes. And Ruin is actually deciding to pull out here. Would have liked to see him at least try to pressure at this third, but deciding now is not the time. Going to start that third at his own again. Yeah, this is scary for him, though, because he, he basically, with walking away here, says, all right, you're on three base economy. I'm on two for a long time because I'm just now starting my Nexus, and I'm going to let you I'm gonna let you be like that. But the upgrade's coming out here for TY. He's not going to be too far behind in that, in that sense. He may even be able to get ahead. We did see one observer go down to a turret. Yeah, um, creator prime style, and it's possible the fact that he just flew it over there kind of haphazardly. Maybe he didn't know about the third, but it's kind of weird to think about. That's definitely a possibility. That was an ouch, a boo boo on that or oopsie daisy. This is a very marauder heavy composition, aka he's going to try to burst down this nexus if he gets an opportunity. He's got two medevacs to try to retreat with uh, get eight of those marauders out. Really nice defense here. This time, Ruin is really doing a job. The last time, he panicked a little bit. This time, he just has the overcharge as natural. Going for the chase on these medevacs. Sadly, not actually bringing the rest of his gateway army, though, with this. Yeah. The thing, the scary thing about having less Marines in your comp, though, against Phoenixes, is actually that they can chase after you, and it's a lot harder to take them down while they take down your medevacs. Even lift some of the Marauders, like you saw there. We're seeing a Twilight Council, as well as... Another Stargate coming up here. He's continuing Phoenix production and actually Chrono boosting it. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the players who comes to mind for Phoenix Colossus to me is, is Kiwi Kaki back in the old days. Uh, you guys haven't heard that name in a long time, but. I just gave you a weird look. I don't know if you saw it, but. I did. That was. 
interesting name to bring back from the from the past. I think it was like uh, I am New York Kiwikaki versus Phoenix, the uh, the player who actually used to be working with Incredible Miracle. I was like a big Phoenix Claw scan if I remember correctly from long ago, and. Uh, Double Phoenix production here with Chrono Boost. He's going to be able to do so well uh, against the Vikings. And don't forget, a Viking cannot 1v1 a Phoenix. And Phoenixes regenerate shields. And if you try to target, of course, the Phoenix with your Marines, then you're doing the wrong thing because you need those Marines for DPS and Army. That's a sad Marauder. What do you think should be the response now that uh, TY has seen this comp? He knows that he's going heavy Phoenix with this Colossus Army. What do you think he's got to do with this comp here? I don't... Okay, yeah, I was about to say, I don't know if he has a second starport. He does. He's making three Vikings at a time. That's what you need, a second starport. And Ghosts are actually pretty good against this because the Phoenixes, once you blank at them, if they get hit with the MPs, they don't, they don't have a lot of hit points. And uh, also, just in general, Ghosts to hit any Protoss unit is, is quite useful. And he just needs to make sure that his Vikings are targeting the Colossi and that something else is dealing with the Phoenixes if he can help it in an engagement. Because if all of your Vikings die after you kill the Colossi, they've still done most of their job. And you can kind of control the map like this, where you have Vikings with a better range. When you're not engaging straight up, try to, to pick off a Phoenix or two with just a, a Viking volley. That can be great. T.Y. responding well so far. Has a really big Viking army. He's continuing to get two at a time. Making those ghosts as well. Uh, goodbye to that uh, pylon. Meaning uh, no more spotting over there. Not too big of a deal. This is what I'm talking about with the Vikings, as long as you can kite. Get some other ship core. No recalls. And a recalls, no time warps. Yep. Setting up the factory here in a wall in position. That pylon being gone means he doesn't know about this warp in, or not warp in, but a run by <laughs> over here. Could be scared. We're going to have our fight here. The Vikings targeting well on all the Colossi. It takes out one and two. And a bunch of these Phoenix doing a lot of damage, and the ground army of TY is doing decently so far. Yeah, it's doing great here. Watch the Protoss armies supply drop like crazy. Now these Phoenixes need to actually participate in lifting using that Graviton Beam. Uh, and the thing is, this next round of warp ends could be so scary. Needs to actually use those Phoenixes for lifts, I feel. Pick those Mars up, eliminate them from the fight. It's not even about killing them. It's just about eliminating their DPS. He's losing so many probes. Meanwhile, SCV's being pulled up line here to help out. And the Vikings, as well as a few more Marines, look like they may just eliminate Ruin's army here. He's on the he's on the run. Yeah, all he's got now is a bunch of these phoenixes with low energy and a bunch of zealots. Whereas a bunch, all of these probes at the third have gone down. You can see the supply right now for Rune is at 61 compared to 130. That's not good. Not good at all. Triple drop here. Those three units being a big nuisance. He killed basically all the uh, all the units at the third base. Now he's starting to work on the probes here at the natural. By triple drop, I mean three units in a drop ship. GG. Rune looking crushed by that loss. This is the fear I had. If Yul loses, KT taking an all kill. And well, we saw TY play a really solid game. Ruin looking pretty good for uh, up until that last fight. I mean, definitely um, not not in shape. His, uh, his engagement was really good TY's where he controlled the engagement by Biggest reason to waste any DPS on those Phoenixes targeted only the Colossi. And I think maybe, possibly, uh, Ruin didn't have enough Stalkers in his army. Because Phoenixes can only basically fight Vikings, and then once that's over, you, you can pick up Marauders. But uh, if you if you make so many Phoenixes, too many Phoenixes, then it's just you just ignore the Phoenixes, and that's not DPS you have in your ground army. That's a lot of resources you spent on, on stuff that's not really doing a great amount of damage. Maybe just a few more Zelts, a few more Stalkers, a, a bigger ground army with this Colossi could have been good for him. And uh, it, it's really hard to say, but I liked his opening. I liked his play style. I liked his response. He was able to identify very quickly that a drop was coming his way. Did not get flustered. Um, solid defense against the Widowmine. 